Hello and welcome to the second channel for Tales from the Trip. I'm your host, Trip Keeper, and on today's video, we are going to be looking at the Reddit thread, Addicts of Reddit. What is the lowest thing you have ever done for money or drugs just to feed your addiction? Question mark. Uh, yes, Ask Reddit. This is by Throwaway. Oh yeah, shout out to them from 12 years ago. Boy, boy, boy. That was 2012 or whatever. Um, yeah, that's seems like a very very long time ago in 2012 where was i in 2012 uh we were supposed to be dead because of the mayans you know you, you guys like that theory how the cern particle accelerator they fucking opened up like a wormhole or something and you know the world has been different ever since that time um i i could buy that you know i maybe if like a black hole might have opened or something i really don't know but that would be i wouldn't doubt it you know I don't have any Miller High Labs with me today, we just got water, so this video is gonna suck, you better just click away. But before uh, we just go on any longer, let's just get to it. Now this is from the, the OP who made this. The lowest thing I ever did was steal from my grandfather's coin collection. He was very upset when he was close to dying because he wanted to give me the collection, but he didn't know what happened to most of it, one of the worst feelings of my life. Yep, you should feel pretty bad. Um, that's when, when someone gives you a collection like that you just you got to hold on to it you got to hold on to it um so you pass it on later when you're dying or something i don't know but you know if it's worth a lot who knows i mean when when they do die that that's ball game that's your ball you know you can do whatever you want with it but that is just not a good thing to do i once had sex with a 50 year old guy for 60 dollars so i could buy coke um yeah, I don't, I don't know, um, I wonder how old they were, and I wonder if they're a man or a woman, uh, that's, it could be, it could be a man, a young man, a young woman, maybe not even young, you know, I don't know, but, you know, that's, just having sex with somebody for, for money, for drugs, is just a bad thing to do, so, yeah, I would have to say that's, that's bad. I did that, but it was $20 for weed, and I'm a guy. Not my proudest moment. I insisted on a condom. Damn right you should have. That's not necessarily a bad thing if you were 73. That's true. Oh, okay, so it says they're 22 years old. Yep, that's not good. That is definitely not good. Um, my coke dealer was really into me, so I dated him just for the free drugs. I thought I had the upper hand until one night after we had sex, he left the room and came back with a friend. He told the guy I'd fuck for coke. I did, and I'm really ashamed. Just had a flashback of Requiem for a Dream. Hope you are clean. Hope you are, hope you are clean. Coke is a bitch of a drug. It's a hell of a drug. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean... You're being pressured at that moment. It's hard for women to get out of that situation. I feel so bad for them when they when they're stuck like that. I mean, what are you gonna say? You know, you you're being pressured by two dudes and they have the the shit you want. I mean, it's just like, come on, don't don't pressure people in those situations. That's fucked up. Um, but they know they can because they got the drugs, they got the coke, and um, most women love coke. So, I mean, guys like coke too. But you know, I've. It's more of a meme to have women do it because that's just what I see more often. But yeah, men, I don't know. Um, so yeah, fuck you, fuck that person. I don't even feel bad for this person. Um, um, but yeah, you just gotta not be in those situations to begin with. That, that's all I gotta say. But it's, sometimes it's hard not not to be in them, you know, when you're just there. Um, but yeah, terrible person, kind of feel ashamed. Um, don't be ashamed. I lost my virginity to the guy I was getting free weed from just to keep it coming. Weed. Fucking weed. You can't even get addicted to that. I was just at a low point. Um, you can get addicted. Edit. Since people keep commenting, I'd just like to clarify. I know people can get addicted to weed or anything. I've seen many people having problems trying to quit. I meant it doesn't have nearly the addictive power over over you that something like an opiate would. Weed's kind of the baby starter of drug usage. I was just commenting that I went very low for something that has such a small effect on your brain compared to other drugs. Yeah, weed is addictive, but like they said, it's, it's not as bad as like getting addicted to an opiate or a benzo or something like that. 
Um, not me, but my white trash West Virginia cousin used to go to gay clubs. Let some guy pick him up and then beat them up, rob them, and when he, when he got back to the guy's house. He eventually had his picture up on all the gay bars in town and almost got shot by a guy he was trying to rob. Meth is a hell of a drug. Um, wait, so... Okay, so he basically beat them up. He, he picked people up and beat them up. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I guess meth is a hell of a drug. I mean, I don't know. Um, all right, here's another one. Maybe my, maybe for a dollar says, my favorite drug always has been and always will be meth. I have been clean for 10 years, but I still want it. When I spent all the money I had on it, I started stealing from my friends and family. Pretty soon, I didn't have those people around either. I needed new income, so I started selling cocaine. I saw, my, I saw what my product did to people that were taking it. I didn't care. I learned how to make crack and sold that too. I saw a high school friend and I gave him a sample. He came back the next day and the next and the next. I got him hooked and I ruined his life. He dropped out of college and started stealing from his parents. I still got paid and was able to get more meth. I saw him this summer. He switched to heroin a few years ago. He is nothing but skin and bones as in a repeat offender. He actually thanked me for introducing him to drugs. He said without me, his mind wouldn't be free like it is now. His parents cut off all contact after he stole everything that wasn't bolted down. I destroyed an entire family, all because I wanted the next high. Um, yeah, pretty fucked up there. Um, it's just like fentanyl dealers who sell fentanyl. You know, it's just you're fucking up not only that person, but you're fucking up everybody. Uh, hopefully this guy just doesn't do this shit anymore. Um, yeah, just for meth too. Like, not even a good reason to do it, you know. Maybe you can see if there's a good reason to sell stuff, but just to get just to get money for other drugs. Like, man, you're a piece of fucking shit. Oh. <sighs> I once helped my bud dealer get some brush off his property so I could get an eighth instead of just the two grams I showed up for originally. I'm addicted to savings. Alright, well. Not me, but involved me. My mom was a, was a hardcore needle junkie who would shoot up to the point where her tracks would swell and clot. That's disgusting. On several occasions, she would have me, seven, ten, seven to ten years old, stick dirty needles in her arm so I could draw out, draw out pus. When the pus was out enough, she would have me shoot her up with different needles so she can get her fix. Oh my god, this is just totally disgusting. I know my dad would sell crack and, has al and always had base heads hanging around his house. He would have girls fuck all of his friends and pay him to get dope, and he told me when he needed to have his house cleaned. They would flick small pieces of crack on the floor, and base heads would pick up and smoke any bit of trash they found. That's just really sad. Two paragraphs that are just completely sad and, and, and disappointing and, you know, well, gross. The worst thing I have done is intentionally, is intentionally got kids in my neighborhood hooked on pills because I knew I was the only place that would get what they wanted. This was when I was like 13, so I was a kid too, I guess. I was a pill junkie. My mom, dad, and I are all clean and put that shit behind us. My dad actually quit everything. Hasn't even had a beer in 17 years. No six for 15. Oh, well, at least that's a happy ending. I mean, what what what's a worse story? Selling cocaine to someone who's of age or selling pills to people who are underage? And who knows if their lives got ruined from that. It's probably the latter, but the first one was just really sad to hear about the guy who um, said thank you for introducing me. But this one is pretty much just as bad. Um, yeah, so kids in my neighborhood hooked on pills uh yeah but that that shit's fucking gross with the pus thing oh my god i mean that's and to have your kid do that that's just so fucked up i'm glad like i said i'm glad they're they're better now um my brother pawned my mom's wedding rings given to her by her dead mother while she was comforting my grandfather as he died in hospice He's an asshole. I'm not terribly fond of him. Also, please don't give me the, you don't understand, he has a disease. The lying and stealing preceded the drug use. Uh, being an inconsiderate asshole is not a disease. Yeah, that's uh, it's definitely, at that point, you can't have any sympathy for someone who does that. Anyone who could sell anything that's close to them like that, 
especially in a time of need. That's just fucked up. Uh, excuse me. I always burp. I swear, whenever I start doing these, I just start burping. My son did the same thing to me. The thing that hurts the most is that the ring I had was the only was the only thing I had left of my mother. He couldn't have gotten more than twenty dollars for it. It meant the world to me. Yeah, I mean, twenty bucks. That's no more than twenty bucks. So it could have been like fifteen, even ten. Um, yeah, that's sad. That's really sad. You know, these people. I mean, they get so. Just get a job. <laughs> <laughs> really just get a job go on only fans sell your dick or your pussy whatever do that don't fucking steal things that are sentimental to other people it's just fucked up also i just started taking hydroxazine i'll probably never take it again let me know in the comment section if you want me to do a video on my experience with it it was literally i don't even know what to say i'm still fucked up from it um all right I basically stole my grandparents' car. I'd been in an accident and the insurance money I got went straight up by arm. They don't really drive anymore and had two cars, so I borrowed the older one. In my mind, I intended to pay them for it eventually, but deep down I knew I would never be able to get enough money together. Thankfully, I got clean and was able to pay them for it. I lied about how much insurance money I got so no one ever found out about my addiction. And they just wrote off the extended borrowing as me being irresponsible and bad with money. All right, well, a little happy ending there. You know, what are you going to do, huh? You paid him back. Good. I'm a stripper at a gentleman's club. Every day feels like I'm doing something awful that I dislike for money. I, didn't, I don't do any extras, but I'm just sick of the lifestyle and the stress of living off tips with no guaranteed pay. Yeah, that's, uh, being a stripper just doesn't sound fun at all. I mean, I just got to deal with all these clients, most of them probably like 60, 70 years old, who are just probably so dirty oh my god i mean the dirtiest men you could think of uh yeah it's just so nasty um all right where is this at? Mm -hmm. my grandfather died and left a shitload of coins forged in silver i melted it all down and got about nine hundred dollars my girlfriend left me with her kids I'd come to love, so I blew it all in heroin and probably almost died. I'm doing fine now, still can't find the love of, still can't find love for the life of me, but I'm almost done with my computer science degree. Edit. When she left, she took all the kids. Um, well that's just not cool. A lot of horror stories on taking kids even though you love them, but, um, you know, gotta hear other sides of the story too. Um... This is not your typical addict slash substance abuser story, I suppose, but I like to share anyway. I had a huge problem with drugs. My drug of choice was anything psychedelic. I inherited just over $20,000 worth of stock many years ago. Uh, in just under two years, I blew almost all of it on really good LSD. Well, that's about the stupidest lowest thing I ever did to feed my drug problem. I think what... I think what makes this truly frightening to me is that I got the LSD at amazing prices and that I tripped and I and that I trip that freaking often on it. I regret I regret it because right now I could really use that 20k for actual important things. I mean, usually you hear people blowing that shit on heroin, you know, meth and stuff, but on acid, like, I mean, you gotta be doing acid way too much to, for that shit. I mean, acid is is not you can't do that that often, dude. Like your brain is gonna be fucked up. Now, don't come in the comment section saying it's safe. It's safe, you know, just to do it every once in a while. But if you're doing that shit frequently, you're going to have some problems later on in life. I'm telling you, even problems in a couple years, probably. So you just got to you got to make a day of it. You got to plan out the trip. I think that's better. Um, but yeah, twenty thousand dollars nowadays. That, I'm sure that was what. Let's see what the inflation is now from 2012. See how much twenty thousand dollars is. All right, we're on CPI inflation calculator. All right, 20, oh, that's weird. $20,000, all right, 2012, let's just do January 2012 um, and March 20, or, or we got April 2024. Oh, okay, well, I guess they don't do March or April yet. Let's do March. 
all right, I thought it would be more than that, but that's still, that's not good either. $27,558.91. So $7,000 more, that's that's definitely a better price to have, better, uh, better amount to have. So yeah, that's crazy. I'm about to save this website. I'm going to use this for later. Bookmark that shit. I had to go in and delete like most of my bookmarks. There's so much like I have stories saved in there and just a bunch of other crap. But it, it, it took a while to delete all those. I'm pretty sure my ex was sexually involved with a man for a brief period to get drugs. I know for 100% sure he was with an older woman. The guy, the guy I'm 95% sure on. Wait. Okay. I, I'm reading that. It just didn't make sense to me at first, but... He's done some terrible things, stole a lot from me and his own son just to get drugs. If he couldn't find money, he would charm people. Damn good at it. Sociopath. If he feels entitled to something, he does most things. He'll just take it. If he knows you care for him, he will find the right thing to say to make you feel sorry for him and people will give him money. I always have to warn people who might meet him or be around if I have to interact with him. Um, he will be the most charming, funny, likable guy when you meet him, but eventually the real him comes out. Eventually they see it. It might be through his treatment of me or something he does to them. They are always blown away at how evil he can become. Yeah, it sounds like a borderline serial killer. You got a sociopath, psychopath, narcissist, ego man. Maybe take shrooms and go through ego death, but... You know, maybe that's the drugs he was taking. You know, sometimes you do shrooms and your ego grows. That, that, that doesn't need to happen. Not me, but a guy that I work with. He is heavily addicted to lore tabs and, uh, and he has lost his entire top row of teeth because of it. It may be because of other drugs, but from what I know about from what I know about him by knowing him for six years, it's all lore tabs. I've heard of lore tabs before. What? Um... Oh, hydrocodone as acetaminophen. All right. Well, he stole all of his dad's pain meds after having several surgery and bought from other people. Recently, he's been stealing money from the cash registers, making the safe short by at least fifty dollars a week. So fifty dollars a week, you gotta be stealing like seven something a week, like seven, seven ten, seven fifteen. What he's doing now for drugs is just plain ridiculous, and he should really think of getting some help. Since he works in the grill, he, he's purposely burned himself four times in the past four months and claimed them all as accidents. He dragged his arm across the grill and poured fryer acid on his arm and leg. He did all this for the insurance money, which would be wasted on lore tabs. Yeah, that's a pretty fucked up one, just hurting yourself just to get drugs. I mean, that's, that's pretty low. If you're doing that, you gotta stop and think about yourself and what you're doing. But yeah, that's that's not cool. Just stealing money with any uh, from anyone is just messed up, or just anything, um, anything sentimental. Like I said, um, someone said this thread keeps drugs away from more teens uh, than Dare program. That's true. Um, not drugs, but I am recovered from a period of severe depression and an eating disorder. When it was really bad a few years ago, I would spend all day, read 10 hours straight, binging and purging. Um, I stole a lot of food from stores and dining halls. I would sneak in that all-you-can-eat dining hall and spend hours there back and forth to the bathroom. Also stole a lot of leftovers from various events, think huge, huge trays of Thai food or pasta, etc. that people put in the communal fridge. When that was gone, I would steal anything else I could find. Raw tofu, condiments, stale rice, etc. And when I ran out of money, I kept using my debit card and overdrawing massively at food courts and asked my parents for money that I would immediately blow on food. I would tear my room apart for nickels for the vending machines, and if I went to someone's house, I would binge massively. I knew I was mostly hurting myself, but I hated myself, so I didn't care. I couldn't stop. It was horrible, and every minute of my life was hell. Somehow over time I recovered and now my life is together again. I'm so grateful for every day, every day now that I'm no longer consumed by the disease. Thinking back on how I was living is like looking to the life of another person. It feels so disconnected from what my reality is now. Alright, so you had a severe eating disorder. I see, it just, yeah. I mean, 
that's a bad addiction to have too, not just drugs. You know, there's a bunch of other bad addictions that you can have. Uh, that one's definitely not good because you could be eating some bad food and just get very unhealthy. Um, I stole around $100,000 from my girlfriend's grandfather and spent it all on oxys and heroin. Jesus Christ. It was all done through fraud. About three times a month, I'd print out fake receipts and give them to my girlfriend. These receipts were garbage. I used fucking word to make them. She'd go over to his house and beg him for the money. He always gave it to her, up to $5,000 at a time, but usually around eight, 800 This went on for a couple years. We bled him dry and ultimately made him give up on life. Fuck, when he was dying, I even went over to his house, strolled in, and stole his fentanyl patches. We were awful, awful people. Been clean for almost six years, but this is the kind of dirt that doesn't wash off. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. I mean, you're a piece of shit. Um, at least you're clean now, but man, that is just so messed up to do. $100,000. I mean, the grandpa probably was a little rich, but that doesn't excuse the behavior of stealing that much money. Like, 100000 is a lot for anybody. Unless it's Jeff Bezos. Who, who cares if you steal from him? Um, but he's not gonna give any money up though. I mean, I, I respect Jeff Bezos for, you know, what he's done and like, I don't like it, but like what he's done for himself, like that's uh, so much money, so much. What, do, what does he even do with all that money? That's what I like to know. I squandered all the money my parents gave me to set up my life on one, food because I was severely bulimic for seven years, two, weed because uh, because I thought an eighth a week during college. Because I bought an eighth a week during college. Sorry. Three, cocaine. Because I bought a gram every week or two weeks for the pa last two years of college. And four, random shit like ecstasy, MDMA, mushrooms, LSD a handful of times. The food is by far the worst because the others were at least recreational and social. And I don't feel badly about, and I don't feel badly about except for the money. Bulimia is a fucking black hole of secrets and lies, and I'm lucky I didn't die. When I think of the money I wasted and flush down the toilet, I get really frustrated, but it's helped but it's helped by the fact that I'm finally well and obviously I never thought I would be. I know people are desensitized to hearing about drug addiction, but cringe and roll their eyes about eating disorders. If that's how you're reacting right now, please don't respond. It's annoying and predictable. Didn't have to read that part. Me and my girlfriend broke into budget auto to feed our cocaine alcohol gambling lust. Stole $1,200 and blew it all away next door. Been clean off the candy five months though. All right. Stole my dead grandmother's wedding ring that wedding ring that she left to my sister and swapped it for two bags of smack. I'm about to fucking put two bags of smack in your ass. I went into rehab just to sell drugs to recovering addicts, just to feed my cocaine addiction. Okay, Jesse Pinkman. Stole money from my family for cigarettes. Stole amphetamine, amphetamines from my friend with ADD. Stole textbooks from my high school and sold them online. Stole a Zippo and lighter fluid. Stole a handle of whiskey and a handful of, and a handle of vodka from my parents. Traded my own ADD meds for Bud. Sold placebo pills and said it was E. Got kicked out of a guy's house and, and as his grandfather was calling the cops, I snagged $20 and a pack of cigarettes from his room. Pretended to be homeless to bum cigarettes. Just a terrible person all around. Um, yeah, you sound like a high schooler in suburbia. Yep, that's about exactly what they are. It was probably 10 in the evening and I was walking with this guy that was selling ecstasy. I really need some quick cash, so I went and woke up my grandma and did $20 of work for her just to get enough money to buy some. I feel so bad and still do. Um, so you did $20 of work for her and you feel bad? I don't... I don't think that's very fucked up. <laughs> um, I once discreetly tossed a tightly packed paper bag of my poop over the counter in a pharmacy and it exploded. While the pharmacist ran away, I hopped the counter and filled my ba backpack with aspirin. Hard to believe that story. I don't think that was, uh, that was real. I mean, if you're doing it, it might seem real if you were doing it for like another drug, but not aspirin. I mean, aspirin is just, it's just crazy. <laughs> Good story though. I like it. Um, 
I'm a gay man in New York City, and I used to prostitute myself for money. But specifically, I'd like to talk about the time I was solicited by the man who composed and produced all the music for Tour the Explorer in Diego. I arrived at his, pl at his place, and he's doing coke. I mean massive amounts of coke, and saying the creepiest shit to me about wanting me to fist him. His haircut was all fucked up, and his, his apartment was a crack den. I ended up getting blown and grabbing $300 and running out the door. Started putting my life in better perspective after that point. Um, well, that's a very interesting story, I'd say. That's, uh, <laughs> the Dorothy the Explorer guy. Um, I, I mean, you're working for Nickelodeon. I'm not fucking surprised here. Was it, uh, was it Brian Peck? Um... My roommate was blinded in undergrad and we usually have money lying around. He had no idea how much he had and would hand me a wad of cash and asked me to count it for him. Needless to say, I took some. Yeah, that's that's not very nice. There's some karma coming your way for that. Um, I gently touched my friend's penis for a cigarette. I regret nothing. Alright. Um, yeah, no. That, uh... Someone had a Breaking Bad reference again. Sold car, two guitar amps, a Les Paul, and decided to go to college to be a pharmacist. Knowledge to synthesize, money to buy what I can't and don't want to, to synth. All in, all in all, addiction can be a motivation. People forget that. All right. Um, well, I'm currently lying to my family and doctor to get Adderall. I've stolen from my best friend for money and drugs, and he has no idea. Every day I feel like I'm getting more and more worthless. Yeah, you are. No offense. Um, I knew a kid in my high school who sucked a dog's dick for coke. I mean, how are you getting coke? Is a dog paying you, or is it just like a dare from people? Like, that is just so nasty. Why? That's worse than the 50-year-old man thing. Oh my god, that is, like, way worse. We're not even, it's not even the same stratosphere. When you say that, compared to this, that's like nothing. Um, yeah, that's, uh, a dog. A fucking dog for coke. Low, low, low. Shotty got them apple bottom jeans. Am I being for real here? Yes. In high school, I got addicted to clonazepam, really addicted. I was only 15 and I was popping 8 to 10 of these pills a night. For those who don't know, it's a sedative with recreational effects, similar to Valium. Yes. I couldn't finance my own habits, so I took to stealing my father's supply, which he desperately needed to help him deal with his panic disorder. That, now that's kind of like stealing your, uh, your grandfather's coin collection or something, that, you know, when they actually need this shit. By the time I begun to dip in, dip uh, by the time I begun to dip into his supply, his panic attacks were getting really bad, so much so that he that he had to begin working from home. But here's the kicker. Instead of just taking the pills, I begun to replace them with almost identical looking gravel so I could take more without him noticing. Swipe a few clonazepam, replace, a replace with a few gravel. Eventually, as you can figure out, there was barely any real clonazepam left, and his bottle was filled with gravel. He only caught on after a few weeks of seemingly inexpli inexplicable panic attacks, which the gravel obvi fuck you, obviously did nothing to help. I realize this is what the threat is specifically asking for, but still, if there are any pitchfork-wielding potential downvoters, be rest assured I feel like absolute shit about it, and I couldn't be happier to be a former addict. Well, at least you're okay now. That's all I gotta say. Nothing positive from that story, especially with someone who needs it. I mean, stealing medicine from someone who needs it, that's just messed up. Um, I used to date a guy who got me free alcohol. Now that I... Wait, they wrote alcohol hall hall. <laughs> alcohol hall. Alcohol hall. I used to date a guy who got me free alcohol hall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now that I look back, the relationship was abusive. I would flirt and charm and strip down to entertain whoever would buy me booze. Um, yeah. I got a job. The horror. Um, the lying, it hurts so much. Yes. Um, oh boy, this is a long one. Not long compared to like normal stories I read, but for this thread. Uh, let's see here, I'm gonna read it. 
A childhood friend of mine has been in a committed relationship with the guy I was friends with in high school. They were both into pills and sort of perpetuated the addiction for each other. Initially, you only heard they were doing perks together, but you couldn't really tell. Then the stealing and the lies began, as it seems to happen this way. Fast forward two years, the girl is pregnant, happily posting about it on Facebook, talking about how she and her boyfriend are so happy. This was after he basically pimped her out to other men for free drugs, encouraged her to work at a strip club, etc. She's posting pictures of ultrasounds and happy coupley pictures of her and her boyfriend. She plans to get off the perks. She had been pimped out by her boyfriend. She was having sex with a married 50-year-old man on the regular. This, this man impregnated her. My friend convinces her boyfriend if it's his kid, the old man paid for an abortion, and my friend announces she had a miscarriage. She had moved, she had moved in with this 50-year-old man recently and has moved on to dope. She still has sex with him. His wife knows. She sells, um, his wife knows. Oh, okay, his, oh yeah, I don't she sells the 50 year old man's pills for heroin and he forbids her from seeing her boyfriend oh and before this she her boyfriend and their friend stole 4500 and two ounces of weed from their very good friend shit is very 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 fucked up i can't say i actually call this girl my friend these days but she was one of the best but she was one of the best back in the day she was a wonderful person, and it honestly hurts my heart to see how she is these days. Her life, be could, her life could become a movie or a book, a classic tale of good girl taken away by drugs. That's definitely a, a tale of uh, good girl taken away by drugs. Yeah, drugs, it doesn't usually end well. It really doesn't, no matter what you're doing. I got one that could probably beat most of these. My dad was a huge coke addict. He loved it. He did anything to get coke. He stole everything from my family. My mom's wedding ring, my senior ring, his own wedding ring. He stole all my games and my systems, like my Wii when everyone wanted one, and they were sold out everywhere. Anything that I value, he stole. It came to a point where I had to hide my money just so it wouldn't get stolen, and it always did. He's clean now, but there was a time where I hated him so much that I didn't even want to look at him when he got clean. Um, I wouldn't say that beats other stories, but it's definitely sad. It's definitely up there for sure. Um, I stole money from an old singular store I used to work at just to feed my video gaming addiction. I stole around $5,000 in a matter of three months. They couldn't prove it was me, but they let me go anyway um, at will employment. A couple months later, the store closed down. I spoke to an old co co on the last day of business, and they told me it was because for the past six months there was no deposit in the bank from the store, so they basically couldn't pay the bills. I still wonder to this day why the manager never bothered to figure out why there's no bank bank, bank deposits till six months later. Yep, you closed down a store, probably hurt a family, go fuck yourself. Um, I rode my bike four miles to steal money from a good friend of mine's wallet after breaking to his house, then rode four miles back through cornfields to pay for the shit. All I could think of was the children of the corn. Alright. Um... I had a girl fart in my face once in exchange for weed. The joke's on her, I love women farting in my face as much as I love weed. Ice Spice, you there? I used a coat hanger to pry a 10 and $5 bill from the very bottom of my almost foot tall piggy bank I've had since I was like five. It was for MDMA, some good fucking MDMA. No shame in that, no shame in that. Um. Sucked a guy's dick for two grams of weed. No one wants weed that badly. Um, sucked a dick for coke. No surprise there. That happens. Um, do, 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 do. I used to steal from my parents a lot. After I was kicked out, I would have sex with the guys for drugs or alcohol. Not an explicit deal. More like they were sharing coke and pot, so I felt like I should repay them with sex. Oh. Um... Convinced boyfriend to buy quarter pounds of pot so I could steal and smoke. Used him for money and made him buy coke. Stole from roommates. Coerced my sister into stealing from my parents for me. I was a bad person. Was. Um, it's so funny when people say drugs or alcohol or drugs and alcohol. Like, bruh, it's the same thing. Um... Mm -hmm. 
I want I once watch a kid for an hour to score weed. I fucking hate babysitting. Yeah, you're better off stealing something. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um do it do 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 it do do. I've never I've never come near the type of addictions I read about and see portrayed in media or real lifestyle or real lifestyle programs. I once had some very pure cocaine on a Saturday at a, on a Saturday that by Wednesday I figured that I wasn't hungry or thirsty. I was just a little cocaine deficient. Have had some since then, but very occasionally, perhaps two or three times in more than ten years. I used to take a lot of ecstasy. First night on it, I got through five pills. Best drug I ever had. That was until I got a rare batch of 4-MTA instead of the usually cut down MDMA. That stuff was wonderful. Got through the batch, did E a few more times after that, but stopped the clubbing lifestyle. I just grew out of it. Never had to battle addiction though. I should count myself lucky, I suppose. To me though, it's just normal not to do something after I figure I no longer want to do that thing. It's almost impossible for me to sympathize with those who truly suffer at their own hand. Alright, this is a piece of shit guy, dude, because, you know, you never got to the point where, um, you know, you got addicted, like, you you may, I, I have that same feeling with some drugs, like, I'm like, how are people even addicted to this? Um, but that doesn't mean there's another drug out there that could happen to you, like, I, I seriously hate people like this, you can go fuck off. Um, Alright. Um, I see my grandmother, uh, I see my grandmother way once in a while. Way? What's way? Way protein are you talking about? Um, once in a while. And when I do, she usually hands me a 20 for gas or rent or groceries because she loves me and doesn't want me to have struggle for more than I do. More than once when I was in, when I was in my high more than twice a week part of my life, I spent this money on X. Never again will I do that. All right. When I was 15, I flashed my bra for two bucks. I was really thirsty. You must have been really thirsty for some water there, buddy boy. Um, oh my God, this is, this is really messed up. Me and Buddy got a clipboard, made a bunch of little blue ribbons, and then went door to door collecting donations for cancer research. Yeah, that, you know, that's, that'll bite you in the ass later on. Um... All right, let's see here. Uh, I don't know how much more. I mean, this this goes on for a while, bruh. Um, in the time I've started drugs and alcohol, again with that, I've slept with as many guys in two months as I dated in high school, which isn't too many, but still. For free drugs, lots of weed, quite few scripts, even X, nothing addictive, but enough to get pretty much hot but enough to get high pretty much every single day. I really hate myself. Worst part, I gave myself just one more month to act this way. Just long enough for the person I've been in love with to come back so we can start a life together. And I think they're done with me as of now, giving me no incentive to change at this point. Also, I've sold valuable coins, usually for gas money to give me places to get drugs, but still. I've seen people sell and pawn all kinds of stuff, though, to get harder drugs, as I'm often surrounded by people who use much harder drugs much more frequently than I do. Lots of theft. Heard, pl heard of plenty of people st uh, stealing to resell to get drugs. All kinds of crazy shit. Um, alright. My boyfriend's mom recently sold a prized possession of his for her gambling addiction. He won a silver dollar in high school for a competition, and she called and asked if, if she could sell it to get her internet back on. He said he'd buy it from her, whatever she asked, uh, whatever she asked because it meant a lot to him. She called back and said she couldn't find it. Fucking horror. I can't believe she did that to him. She has ruined her life and fucks with ours, thanks to her gambling addiction. Yeah, that is, uh, that's fucked up. Um... My drug of choice was hydrocodone, Vicodin, Lorsets, Lortabs, Norcos, etc. I've been clean for two years and nine months now. Well, congrats. I stole from several customers at a bank I used to work at by forging checks and withdrawal slips. I used to borrow money out of my teller drawer, telling myself I would pay it back, and sometimes would blame a drawer shortage on a mistake I made, knowing full well where that money went. I stole money from my church multiple times. I would take money out of the collection plate, and I also stole several checks from forged signatures, uh, totaling to around $6,000 from the church. My dad handled the money for it. 
I stole money from my grandmother and my 85 year old great grandmother. I stole money from my parents and even uh, and even from both of my little brothers. I stole money from my girlfriend and her family too. I stole money and drugs from friends all the time. I committed armed robbery at a gas station owned uh, at a gas station owned by a poor immigrant. I sold pills for a good bit too and enabled so many others into, into this horrible excuse of a life I used to lead. Um, the kicker to this convention convention confession is that i never went to jail or was punished at all for any of this i never got caught for stealing except when i stole from him from my parents and they didn't turn me in please to anyone that reads this be extremely careful with opiates it is amazingly easy to get addicted to opiates and before you know it you can't function without them I was an opiate addict for seven years and towards the end there i was taking an average of 50 pills a day holy shit Please don't go down that road. Reddit, if it had come down to it, I would have rather bought the pills than eat or take care of any, or take care of any other responsibilities. Uh, I'm thankful I don't have kids because they would surely be a mess too after all this. Yeah, thank God you don't have any fucking kids. That's that's messed up to do. Stealing from that many people, from that many needy people. Like, come on, bro. Church, what are you doing? Um, you know, that's that's messed up. I am glad I can get this off my chest. My dealer, who isn't a bad looking guy, he's cute, upped his prices from 15 a gram to 23 bucks a gram, so he could have some extra cash. One night I really needed weed so I made out with him and stripper grinded on him until he came just so I can get a gram for 10 bucks. Um, I don't know. Um, well, if he's cute, go for it I guess, I don't know. Um. But yeah, twenty three dollars for a gram—that's that's insanity. I remember back in the day, prices were pretty high for weed. But once you got older, the weed got cheaper. Dare was a waste of time. My coke, weed, ecstasy, and cigarette dealer was my aunt, so I never had to pay. But I was essentially her bitch. Whatever she needed—a drink, fridge food—I went and got it. This was the summer of two thousand nine when I was fourteen. Thankfully, I was only spending the summer with my aunt, so when I came home, a massive withdrawal went down. Clean on everything ever since. Alright. Um. Sell plasma twice a week to fund weed. Blood habit. I actually find this. Actually, I find this quite a noble way to fund my recreational drug use. Well, I guess, I mean, you're helping out, but it is like, you know, giving plasma. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I've had weed fronted to me without knowing how I would pay for it. It was a small amount, like $35 worth, so it wasn't a big deal. But that night, I realized it was stupid to do that. Um, alright, not that interesting. Um, I had this one guy who was basically my personal servant for a year. Um, he would, he would always ask me for oxys on the front. I refused every time, but could see he was sick and down bad. I told him he could do a couple chores for me and I'd hook him up. Next thing you know, he's my housekeeper, chauffeur, and personal chef. And I was just barely giving him enough not to be sick. I borrowed his car for about 8 months, just tossing him a pill here and there for it. Caught him with his hand in the cookie jar one time and fired him. Poor guy, I can only imagine the shame he must have felt living like that. Well, you definitely did not help him. Poor guy, yeah, you should feel fucking bad, you piece of crap. Um do, 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 do. I stole twenty dollars from my brother when he was like seven for some Pokemon Pokemon cards. Fuck me, I'm not getting into heaven now. I'm going to hell and several years later I stepped on broken glass, so I have bad luck. Waste of time. Waste of time for reading that. Alright, okay, these are all fake, I think. Uh, cause they're all bunch of downvotes um not saying none of those weren't but you know i feel like most of most of those were were real except you know the aspirin one that was just really fucked up uh, all right um that was this video uh what'd you guys think of it you want me to do more of this crap um and like i said if you want me to do the hydroxyzine video let me know just coming down um it's it's a hell of a drug i'll tell you that um I, it's definitely stronger than Benadryl. She said it was similar to Benadryl, and I knew that. I, every time she tells me about a medicine that she could offer me, I'm like, I pretend like I don't know what she's talking about, but I do know. <laughs> but I don't want to be rude. Um, but yeah. All right. Hope you all have a wonderful night, and sleep tight, and don't let the bed bugs bite. But if they are DPH spiders, 
They won't bite you, but they will because they're in your skin.